Hi everybody. I'm going to show you how to make a really neat Mother's Day journal. Now the purpose of the journal is so that, you know, every Mother's Day we all get these lovely cards and greeting cards from our children and then eventually they either get um, discarded or altered into some other source if you're a crafter and all those lovely sentiments your children write are gone or you know put away somewhere recycled or whatever so I saw um, a friend of mine sent me a link about one that she said it was a journal and every Mother's Day the chil the children and the spouse your children and spouse would write their greeting or their sentiment inside the journal if the children are little they draw pictures and at the end of the years, you have a beautiful journal with keep, uh, wonderful keepsakes and words and things from your family that they've written over the years. I think, personally, this would be an absolutely outstanding gift to give on to a on a mother. Um, sorry, at a baby shower, so that once the child starts to draw or scribble or whatever, you could date it. And this is what they wrote to you that day. And over the years, you would just see them mature and their words mature and watch them grow in your journal. And it's something you could always keep instead of having a drawer or the odd junk drawer where all your greeting cards get pitched. I think you could use it for birthdays as well. But this one I'm making particularly for Mother's Day. So, without further ado, you're going to cover this in the napkin method that I've been using forever. And for some of you who've never seen that, what you do is, first of all, you take any napkin of your choice. So I'm using this really whimsical striped one. And then, first you have to tear out the two inner lay um, layers. There's always either one layer of white paper or two. This napkin is two. So we want it right down to the bare print of the napkin. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on this napkin. And then I'm going to create a mixture of Mod Podge and paint to cover this up so that the composition book uh, print doesn't seep through my napkin design. So um, I'm kind of killing two birds with one stone. If I mix it, the Mod Podge and the paint together, then I've got my glue and paint all in one step. Makes it easy peasy. So I'm using these Liquitex uh, paints and I thought this turquoise was a really pretty color that kind of matched the turquoise and the stripe. So we will just mix those, or you could just use white if you want. Whatever, you could use gesso as well, but gesso is more expensive than paint. So you're just mixing that all together and then we're gonna coat our book and then lay our napkin on top. So there you have it. I took the brush and dabbed a bit over where the bolder black was showing through because I just don't want that to show through it as much. I'm going to make sure that I pay attention as to which way my stripes on my napkins go for this particular pattern because this napkin has a diagonal so I'm making sure they all go up so when I do the back, I have to remember that that's what I did. And just gently, rear, not only does it get the wrinkles out, but it also um, helps it adhere down. And so now I've got a bit of a blue tinge to my uh, cover, which is awesome. So I'm just going to dry it with my heat gun. So what I'm using to just get rid of these edges is just an emery board. I find it works the best. I, I cut it down and then I just file it just like you would your nails. So the next step I'm just going to take my brush without any Mod Podge now and I'm going to paint um, inside the covers on the back and the front with the blue. The same blue, just no Mod Podge. So I finished painting the inside cover, so I'll show you how nice that came out. And then on the outside here, I cut a four inch strip of cardstock coordinating colors. It's the uh, Reflections ones from Michaels and it's, I think, different reds it's called. Let me just grab the package because that red is just so pretty. It's shades of red, shades of red. 
And it's this nice, pretty one there. It's very soft. It's almost like a deep, 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 deep pink. So then I used my scallop punch, this one, and made a little scallop border on the edge there. And I'm trying to make this very whimsical. So what I'm going to do now, I took my banner punch from Stampin' Up, this guy here, and out of the large scalloped border uh, pennant, I punched that in yellow and I punched this in white. So I have glued the two together like this. And then I have some basic gray, kind of really orangey print letters. And I'm going to put the word mommy inside of it and sort of hang some twine here. So I'm just into my embellishing mode here, so I'll show you what I did so far. I've got Mommy, hang on, I've got Mommy in the pin and across the top. It's really hard at this angle, but I'll show you it later on when it's all, there you go, you can see it there. So down here, I want to put some kind of collage of doilies or something. And the reason I want to use paper flowers and elements is because it's I don't want it to have a lot of bulk. And when the kids go to write in it, I want them to be able to open it and lay it flat without a big lump of a big hard flower being in the way. I'm just going to get some of this stuff out of the way. So I'm just looking through all my stuff. So I've got two, one large doily here. And I'm going to crinkle it up like so and just put it here. I'm going to put it a little bit off center. I'm not putting it smack dab in the middle. I'm putting it closer to this scallop border edge. And I'm going to take some chalk ink here by Prima. It's a really pretty turquoise. This color is called turquoise. Turquoise Stone is the name of this color. And I'm just going to lightly brush it over top of this doily. Just maybe pick up some of those crease marks that I um, made. Especially on the edges because that's what you're going to see. So I want some dimension but at the same time I recognize that it needs to be relatively flat. I'm going to do the same thing with the smaller doily, crunch it and ink it up as well, mostly around the edges of the doily. And I'll glue that down. <clears throat> and then I found this really pretty, it's like a velvet flower, isn't that gorgeous? I'm going to put that in the middle. And this yellow old time prima flower, it had a little sequin in the middle. I took it out. So I'm going to ink that up as well. And then I've got this really cute brad. It's from the Lost and Found Company. I'm going to ink up this Prima as well because it matches so well. So I've got that little combo there. Then I found this Lost and Found brad that is so darn cute. It's turquoise with little white polka dots. And it just so adds to the whimsy of this whole page. I love it. So I'm going to poke all the flowers through that and then I'll just adhere them to the page. So what I've also done is ran the chalk ink all the way around. You see where the pages are? I squeeze the book tight. And this is to, I'll show you why. When I was painting in and some of the paint uh, bled through there from doing the cover and putting the napkin on. So you simply take your chalk ink, which I will do right now, and it helps to hide that little bit of a mess and it looks much tidier. Do you see? Doesn't look like you made any boo-boos. So I'm going to glue these strings down as well. So here is the finished Mother's Day journal. I made this 
specific person whose children call her mommy. So that's what's why I put mommy there. So you can see the chipboard letters and the napkin and the blue ink, how it seeped through, giving it that kind of grungy-ish look. So I made my flower with doilies, doily, doily, flower, flower, flower. And then, like I said, that little polka-dotted brad, you can really see it well when you're looking from this angle. And the back is exactly the same. And then my uh, binding with the um, cardstock. And then for closure, I used a button and I glued it with both E600 or 6, I never know if it's 600 or 6000, and glue, gun glue. So it'll glue with the glue gun for immediate and the E600 will keep it glued forever. And then in the back, I punched a hole with the crocodile there. And then I put one of those things so the elastic won't slide through and it just stays. And so that's the fastening. So it's pretty basic like we would do for any of our art journals. But the cool thing is what I put here. This is a treasured keepsake designed to hold your family sentiments. Instead of traditional greeting cards, your family can instead enter their thoughts of love to you in this journal to be cherished forever. And this was a Making Memories journaling card from way, way back. And I just glued it on the bottom just for a little change. Then on this page, these are things that, um, what if her little boy brings her a dried dandelion or something? She can keep in here and also in here. This is, um, these are coin envelopes and this one kind of sells sticks, but you can open it and close it. So I put treasure and hearts there. And then I've got this really uh, nice scrapbook paper by DCWV. And then the rest is just plain for her children to draw pictures, write sentiments, her husband to write sentiments, till this is full, which will take a few years if she just uses it for Mother's Day. Or you could use it for birthday. And then on the back, same thing. This one says notes and memories. And it's exactly the same with the two envelopes and the same paper. And then I just stamped created by Monica. So I just thought this was a really clever idea. Again, using our composition books, using the stuff we have, and creating a really unique, different gift. It saves on the paper because you're not buying greeting cards. Of course, you're always welcome to make cards or buy them if, if some crafter is making greeting cards for Mother's Day. But you could always glue that card in your journal. So thanks a lot for watching, everyone, and we'll see you next time. Bye.